Hi, I'm Zachary Shirley, president of the Finger Lakes Community College Student Veterans Organization. If you're looking for information about mental health, every community has government, nonprofit, and private agencies that can help you. I had an opportunity to learn more about one local resource, the Partnership for Ontario County. Its mission is to cultivate positive social change through programming that improves health and well-being, including mental health. I spoke with two partnership staff members, Tracy Dellastrito and Ashley Tomasini, and we had a great conversation. Ashley and Tracy, thank you guys so much for uh, coming to talk to us today. Um, to start, can you guys just introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about you know what you guys do and uh, what your background is? Sure, I'll start. Uh, my name is Tracy Dellastrito, and I'm the executive director of the Partnership for Ontario County, and that is a local. A locally based organization um, that provide a lot of different programs for families and youth in Ontario County. Um, some of those programs are Ontario County Youth Court, which is a diversion program for first time uh, uh, youthful offenders. Um, so it's a peer led program. It's a really beautiful program based on restorative justice practices. We have another program, uh, the Youth Clubhouse, uh, which are drop-in safe spaces for youth in Ontario County between the hours of 2.30 and 7.30, 8 o'clock at night. We have one in Bloomfield and we have one in Geneva. And so those are just great um, spaces for youth to just kind of be present and, and to grow in relationships and, and just have a sp safe space for them to be. Uh, we have a uh, community support center, which is a uh, great program that offers free mental health uh, counseling for anyone in the community short term. Uh, we have other, a variety of different programs that the Community Support Center offers throughout the community as well. Um, really the point of that, of that program is to really bring people together um, and just to be together in terms of growth and relationship building, pro-social ways. And then we have coalitions, which are uh, groups of people that come together for with a common ground and a common interest. And the two coalitions that we have are substance use prevention and suicide prevention coalitions. And so um, those meet monthly and there are groups of people in the community, agencies too, who really are invested in making a change in their community. So all of those programs really kind of live under the partnerships umbrella. And so I work with all the great directors and the people who run all those programs. Oh wow, that's that's quite a lot we got. Yeah, you know, that's, a, little that's bit. a large program I can tell already. <laughs> a little bit, a little Absolutely. bit. Absolutely. Yeah. What about you, Ashley? Yeah. Um. So I'm Ashley Tomasini, and I am the coalition coordinator. So I coordinate our two coalitions: the um, Substance Prevention Coalition and the Suicide Prevention Coalition. And so that kind of leads us into our two um, programs that we have that are new. Um, so we're working on Ontario Cares and Lock and Talk. Um, and so Ontario Cares uh, really is a resource kind of for everyone in the whole community. So we're the partnership for Ontario County. We cover the entire county. And um, so we wanted a one-stop shop with resources for pretty much anyone out there, um, a place for people to go if they're looking for um, really no matter what they're looking for, um, whether it's youth resources or um, you know resources in Spanish or um, just general mental health resources, if they're looking for mental health resources specific to the LGBTQ plus community, kind of no matter what someone's looking for, we wanted a place where um, you can find all of those resources. So um, that's a new website that uh, we have and uh, we're really excited to roll it out. Interestingly, though, a couple of years ago, you know, right as we were in the middle of COVID, uh, we we realized and recognized this need for kind of this one stop shop. I don't know about you, but there were so many resources, right, coming at you during that time. And you know, if you were lucky, you'd kind of stumble across the right one that was, um, you know, like food resources, pantry, you know, great. But wouldn't it be great as a county to be able to have kind of that one stop shop? And so um, we did some focus groups, uh, working with people in the community, youth in general, or actually in specific, to be able to say, what uh, look and feel is this gonna have for you? Um, you know, how is this gonna be accessible to you? So it was re it's really important that we have, whatever we're putting out in the community, we have community buy-in, as well as community um, um, support to be able to say, this is what, what's gonna work. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really fantastic. You know, you mentioned the accessibility of the programs. Um, I think a lot of people get discouraged when they look into something and hit a dead end. 
and then they turn back yes. around and then they have to go look again. Mm -hmm. um, but it sounds like you guys have a network where you can direct people where they need to go. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of different resources and places they can land for what they're trying to get a hold of, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that's kind of the beauty of coalition work is it is, as Tracy said, a group of people. So, um, you know, we have people, community members, we have people in other organizations. So it is just a big network of all different resources and uh, people from all sectors and areas of the community. So I was curious, you know, can you guys tell me, there sounds like a whole lot of things to go <laughs> into here. Um, what about some of your more recent initiatives? What are some newer things that are in this um, whole entire network that you guys are working on? Yeah, um, so probably our newest one is uh, Lock and Talk. And so that's a program um, that was created in Virginia as Lock and Talk Virginia. Um, and then we recently became a partner agency. So now we have Lock and Talk Ontario County. Um, and Lock and Talk really is a program for suicide prevention to um, work on lethal means reduction. And so really what that means is putting time and space between someone who's experiencing suicidal thoughts or suicidal ideation um, and the means to do so, especially the more lethal means. Um, so the lock part of it is really um, securing guns, uh, securing medication. It's not at all a political thing. It's just about safety, keeping everyone safe. Um, and so what that looks like in practice is we're going to be giving out a lot of gun locks, a lot of medication lock boxes, and also um, drug uh, disposal pouches. Um, so basically with these pouches, um, you put water in it, you put medication in it, and it kind of like deactivates the medication. Um, so it's all about keeping people safe. The talk piece of it really is doing various trainings. Um, so we have an assist training, which is a two-day intensive training. Um, youth mental health first aid, mental health first aid um, are all things that um, we seek to offer through this. And then also the talk part of it is just decreasing the stigma um, that you know surrounds suicide and suicide prevention and mental health and really just encouraging folks to have open dialogue and open conversation and if you know someone who's struggling um, you know making sure to just reach out and, and help them so it's kind of this all-encompassing um, program which we're really excited to get off the ground. So it sounds like this whole entire program that you guys have going on um, it serves like a dual purpose um, not only does it help with that suicide reduction or prevention um, but it also is a measure to help protect children. You know, I know that um, unsecured firearms in the home and especially those medications can be very dangerous to kids mm -hmm. that don't understand the danger associated with that. Mm -hmm. um, I've never heard of these pouches before. That's, that's an interesting idea, you know. I know that uh, they're going against that old advising of just flush them. Mm -hmm. Now that we're learning more about the impacts of that. So that's an interesting mm -hmm. option. I've never, I've never heard of that before. Mm -hmm. um, I was also wondering about this Ontario Cares. Mm -hmm. um, you'd mentioned that in your introduction. So can you tell me a little bit more about that as well? So the Ontario Cares, um, really, as Ashley said, that platform of resources, it's kind of this composite of, of all great resources to be able to have. And really, it started um, with this idea of all these resources coming at you and really having this one space. And But we, we recognize the need to really tailor it toward mental health, right? To really push in some of those um, resources that are in the community that folks may not know about um, and having a platform for them, specifically speaking to those mental health pieces. And so bringing in, like Ashley said, um, specific resources for those in certain um, populations, whether it's veterans or LBGTQ community or um, any community, really Spanish speaking. So uh, really tailoring those to make sure that where we are um, making sure that we're meeting the needs of the folks that we have. And also when we're, when we're sh sharing the message about Ontario Cares or Lock and Talk, really looking at ways that we are um, getting the messaging out in our outreach, right? So ways that folks receive information in Naples, right? It might be different than the way folks, pe people receive information in Geneva, right? So really taking a look from the coalition's perspective, and that's why it's so important to have a committed group of people on our coalition from different walks of life and different spaces in our county. So there's representation to say, listen, um, you know, how do you think this would best work in this community, Bloomfield versus um, Victor, right? And so really looking at, and that's, you know, one of the, the goals and, and roles of, of someone who gets to be on these coalitions or is invested in the coalition to say, I am someone in my community who cares about this and how can I help? And then we are around the table and we are able to kind of say, you have this you know, ability to connect with your community in this way. 
and let's loop it in. Um, you know, the, you know, how do we get uh, Lock and Talk or Ontario Cares, you know, pushed out into your community? You know best because you're the representative from that community. So really, that's grassroots, right? That's community coalition work. Um, and that's really what most of the partnership, what we are in terms of being community-based and then specifically with the coalition work that we have. So I'm really curious um, about the Lock and Talk program. You know, um, firearms and gun control has been such a big topic lately. Um, I'm just curious how you guys get out there to give these gun locks to people and how you guys spread the awareness of this. So is there like a certain practice you guys follow to go out into the community to provide these? Do people have to come to you? What, what does that look like? Yeah, um, absolutely. People can contact us and we can provide them with that. Um, but we do a lot of outreach. And so that really looks like uh, going to gun retailers, going to gun shows, gun clubs, um, uh, and just really talking to people there um, and just kind of spreading the message as, um, in a way that works best. So if we're going to a retailer, um, we have kind of a, a one-page uh, letter that we might send ahead of time just as an introduction, and then um, perhaps follow up with a quick visit, um, just try and talk to them a little bit more about what the project is. And um, you know, we have a lot of information and resources that Lock and Talk Virginia has shared with us. And um, so we have one-pager infographics, things like that. Um, so it's really, again, that tailored approach to who uh, the audience is. And then for something like um, a gun show, um, we'll go and table, have all of our materials there. We have kits with the, um, the gun locks and uh, a medication lock box, usually, or a, um, one of the disposal bags, and also information, resources, um, how to use the gun lock. And um, so those kits then are given out to people who stop by the table in the community. And um, also, we're there to have a conversation with people, too, if they uh, want to know more information or just have questions. And I think, too, the beauty of <clears throat> this program is that it really, I think it works, and I think the folks in Virginia really um, nailed this home is that it works built on relationships, right? And so there's a lot, and that's what the partnership does. We're relationship-driven, we're community-based. And so being able to, it is not our job to go into a gun retailer or a rod and gun club and tell anyone that whatever they're doing is right or wrong. But we're just here as a community-based organization providing resources. And if this works for you and if this fits for you, fantastic. Let us know how we can help the community that you're serving. And uh, really just, again, building relationships. And that's the beauty of Virginia having done this throughout their whole state. Um, and then sharing it with us and they've been able to share what's worked for them and challenges that they've had and maybe different tactics and angles. And so again, it's to me, it's really about building those relationships with the, again, phase one, kind of the folks who are firearm owners um, and really just kind of, you know, recognizing that they have a recognition probably of gun safety and then just reinforcing and, and providing the resources mm -hmm. if they don't have it. And I think there's a second phase that ultimately uh, will always have them available if folks want them. But I think, you know, in phase two, I think there's an opportunity to really look at the community as a whole, right? Are there um, schools that might want this information, maybe at PTAs or just to share the information just so they know that we're here, not pushing into, but just letting folks know that we are here as a resource and we have these available um, kits and then also just messaging and really, like Ashley said, hitting home the mental health piece and the piece of the talk, right? And hopefully destigmatizing a little bit uh, mental health uh, needs and awareness and then um, suicide. Um, you know, those are hard words to say. And so the more that we talk about it, uh, the, the more destigmatized it can be. You know, I, I agree wholly, you know, when it comes to solving a problem, we have to acknowledge that it exists first. Right. And then we have to figure out what we're going to do about it, you know. Um, so I'm curious now, like I said, with it being such a hot issue lately, um, I'm sure you guys might get a little pushback here and there with the gun locks. I can't imagine people balking at getting a little lock box for pills, but as soon as you get a gun lock <laughs> on the table, then people start to go like this. Yeah. Um, I think it's a responsibility for gun owners to secure properly, mm -hmm. not only for the safety of their children who they might have in the home, but also in the event that um, that firearm's stolen. 
you know, um, it's, it's, a, it's a barrier to prevent something, at least for a certain time. Um, but how do you guys manage those, you know, prickly conversations you guys might have? What do you guys usually do to manage that? Yeah, um, well, first, uh, we definitely tried to be proactive. So in starting Lock and Talk, um, we did meet with the Ontario County uh, Sheriff, and Tracy also met with the town supervisors. Mm -hmm. And um, we just tried to let them know, hey, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it, and really just try and get ahead of some of those um, fears and concerns that the community might have. Um, so we definitely did that just to get the message out there. And then um, again, it's all about transparency and that relationship building. So really emphasizing it's not political. This is not about the Second Amendment at all. It's really just about safety. So we're not doing any political advocacy mm -hmm. with this at all. It's really just here we, we have resources for safety um, and we're encouraging people to have those conversations that, that can be challenging um, sometimes. So just we kind of keep emphasizing that and um, just trying to be open and have an open dialogue with people. And that's kind of really how we try and approach it. And um, also like this can be an ongoing conversation. So kind of before when I mentioned um, like with gun retailers, like first we might send a letter and then kind of follow up maybe later with a short visit, things like that. So um, rather than just like a one time, like we're here to lecture you, it, that's not the approach at all. It's more of that relationship building and kind of over time having a conversation with folks. Right. I'm glad that you mentioned uh, that you work with the Ontario County Sheriffs mm -hmm. um, because I was under the impression that the police department has those as well. You can go and ask from those. I, you might be right about that. I can't remember exactly, but you might be right about that. And I think it's there's value in just reminding folks. And then not, it, it, not that we want to swerve away from the conversation of firearm safety, but th there also is the conversation about medication safety. Mm -hmm. There's the conversation about even cannabis with it being legalized. Again, it's legal, but um, if there's kids and animals in the house, might it, um, be helpful to have them also put in a lockbox so that it, you know, doesn't, there isn't access uh, sure. within the home too. So again, just from a purely just responsible and safety measure, just having those conversations. People can take it or leave it, but, you know, people are going to make their own choices. But if we're there to be able to provide another option, then all the better. Sure. Um, yeah, so people can find our resources at empoweroc.org slash Ontario dash cares. And then I'll take them to all of those resources that we mentioned. Awesome. And they'll also be linked on the Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition's website, as well as the Partnerships website, which is partnershipforontariocounty.org. Gotcha. Now I'm kind of curious, um, what other sort of resources um, do you guys have in the network that aren't necessarily, because it seems like you guys have volunteers and other people that come in. Do you guys have any professionals on the, on the roster that are part of this as well? Yeah, so um, as it relates to Lock and Talk, uh, as Ashley said, we're collaborating really closely with Ontario County Public Health, uh, as well as mental health, really, to kind of bring in some of those training components. And so as they're trained um, in their spaces in suicide prevention, we really bring those their professional skills into the community. And then separately with uh, one of the partnerships programs, the Community Support Center, we uh, grew post-COVID. We had one counseling site throughout the county. And then again, with COVID, we saw the need to have um, access within other communities. So we opened another counseling site in Naples, and then we have another counseling site right in Geneva. And so we have grown to three counseling sites um, throughout the county. And again, those are free uh, opportunities for counseling, short-term, solution-focused, and we can, we, um, consult with about 10 different uh, licensed med um, uh, licensed pr uh, professionals, uh, mental health professionals, uh, to be able to uh, provide those therapeutic services. That's fantastic. Yeah. I think um, money is a big hang up <laughs> right now. You know, money is, uh, money is tight for a lot of people right now, I'm sure. Um, and I think that component, the magical four letter word, F-R-E-E, mm -hmm. you know, that's mm -hmm. a big thing that talks to people. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. maybe even, you know, we're talking about reducing the stigma, which is a big part, having those tough conversations. And when you remove that barrier of financial burden, I think that really encourages more people to come in through the door um, and you know, check out some of the resources you guys have. And that's what we found with the short-term uh, solution-focused therapy was that 
sometimes committing to a long-term therapy or therapist or signing on to move forward could be a little overwhelming, but I don't know about you, but I could try something for six weeks, right? And so if it's six to 10 sessions, if it's not your bag, you tried it and maybe hopefully utilized and learned some skills of the trade, you know, to help you. Um, but if not, then um, our coordinator is there to kind of help you and assist the person in finding a more long-term solution if that's something that fits for them. Right. Yeah. So how do people get involved in this? Like what can people do to volunteer or apply to become, you know, involved in this entire process? Because you guys obviously want to grow. So how do you guys yeah. bring in new people or more community members? I think one's, for me, a one-stop shop is going to the Partnerships website. So the Partnership for Ontario County .org, we have a volunteer tab and there is an opportunity uh, to be able to fill out a form and you can note on there which program right might might resonate with you. Maybe it's uh, suicide prevention or maybe it's youth court or maybe you want to get more involved in the community support center and those community based events. And so uh, that's just a, kind of a first stop right for people to say I want to be involved in your organization. I'm interested in these things and then it d gets disseminated to the program director who would then reach out and say let's talk. How do you want to be involved? What prompted you to to reach out? And we're a, we're so happy that you contacted us. Yeah. So obviously, you know, this is such a large thing. There's so many moving pieces, and it must be, you know, pretty demanding for a lot of people that are involved. So I'm just curious uh, between the two of you, what really motivates you to keep going? You know, what are some maybe an example or or an event that you guys did that were really big payoff? It really, you know keeps you guys interested in this and keeps your heart, you know, in the game. Yeah, um, so getting back to that community piece and that relationship building, um, we recently connected uh, with the Edinger family. So they host uh, their annual Joseph Edinger golf tournament in honor of their son who died by suicide. And um, so we were able to go to the golf tournament and um, we set up a table there. We were able to leave resources out for anyone looking for resources. And um, we were just so glad to connect with the family. And um, at the end of it, uh, their golf tournament was a fundraiser and they don't donated $20,000 to the coalition. So we're so grateful for their support and also just for knowing them, meeting them, um, being connected with them. So we're uh, really just always glad to build those relationships with people and um, continue spreading the message and just making those connections to get the word out further. And I would say, you know, from an anecdotal standpoint, I mean, as Ashley said, we have outcomes and metrics for all our programs, but uh, we had a woman that came through our program and uh, really she touched on a lot of the different programs that we have. At one point she needed, uh, you know, some just direct services, food, uh, gas cards, and other, another time down the road she needed, you know, food and, or, excuse me, mental health services. And then she really grew into other spaces of then volunteering and giving back. And at one point, about a year and a half through just, again, being a part of our community, um, and just connecting with uh, various programs and different people in our community. She shared a story at our board meeting. We have um, our board of directors and she was able to share her story of how being involved in these programs really saved her life and her two daughters lives. Um, she was on a path that was uh, not um, a dark path and she really didn't see anywhere out. And I think that's where that community piece always comes in. Um, you know, mental health is so important, but coming together, like you said, Zach, like bringing people together and finding ways to connect, those are so huge and impactful to people's lives when they need that support. And so sometime down the road, maybe if we share a lock and talk pouch with someone, maybe they don't need it now, but they might need it later and they might make that call um, and those resources. But again, to her, that was life-changing and um, you know the tears that she shared when she was sharing her story were evident and real and those that's the reason why we do what we do you know that's that's fantastic to see so many people impacted over 25 years now you know mm -hmm. um, please keep doing what you guys are doing you know it's it's a fantastic service and i think you guys are doing a great job and i hope that it continues to expand um, and thank you so much for coming to talk to us today and um, sharing what you guys offer and what you guys have done and are continuing to do for uh, Ontario County. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. I learned a lot today from Tracy and Ashley about just one organization, the Partnership for Ontario County. 
keep watching for a list of other national, state, and local mental health services, and look for opportunities to have your own good conversations.